Dearly beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, God is good, and at all times, He is our life. He is our banner. The reason why all the time we say Ebenezer, because He is the one who helps us all through. The far that we come, the far that we are, we thank the Almighty God. Brethren, you are welcome to this another episode. We appreciate God for his love, for his care, for his provisions. We thank him that he has been good. He cares, he provides. And so every time we think about his goodness, we say hallelujah, because he is the one who saves us. And we say hosanna in the highest, because salvation comes from him. And so every time we gain courage, we gain encouragement from his word, Every time that we read it, every time that we think through the word of God, every time that we think about his goodness, we jubilate, we rejoice in the midst of challenges. And even when we go astray, his word corrects us. And so we continue reading about God's people that are written in the Bible. Like it has always been, we read about them. We talk about them. We preach about them so that we gain some insights, deep, deep insights about them and so that we live according to what God requires of us. And so we have been looking at biblical personalities. Recently, we have looked at um, you know, people that have written their words in the Bible, writing people. And then we have those people that have been written about now we have talked about prophets. We have talked about prophets who wrote and the prophets who did not write. And we have talked about kings. Kings like King David bears a name in the Bible. And he is a key factor, a key person in the Bible. We have talked about very many people and we shall continue talking about them because from them we gain lessons that will, something that we learn for our energizement and for our correction and rebuke. Now, we have talked about prophets, and Prophet Isaiah stood out as one of the writing prophets, and I just want to continue with his book. And in his book, we picked several things, and one of the things we have talked about, uh, what he wrote about, what he talked about, and then we have picked two personalities in there, apart from Isaiah himself. We talked about King Uzziah, one of the people that actually is key in his life, because in Isaiah chapter 6, as I said, in the king, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. And so we picked time to talk about Isaiah, Uzziah, what he did, who he was, but his main impediment, his main challenge was pride. And many, many things happened there. Now, this time, friends, I just want us to talk about another personality in the prophet, in the book of Prophet Isaiah. And this personality is king called King Hezekiah. King Hezekiah one of the personalities in the book of prophet Isaiah. And Hezekiah is a name, but just like another biblical name, just like another Hebrew name, his name has a meaning, and his name means God strengthens. It comes from the root word Hebrew, Hazak. Hazak means strengthen. And that's the Hebrew, um, the, the derivation that this word comes from. And so, God strengthens is the name Hezekiah. And so Hezekiah was one of the kings in Judah. Judah, you remember that actually Israel was divided into two kingdoms. One kingdom was in the south called Judah, where Jerusalem city was. Another kingdom was in the north called Israel, and that's the northern kingdom called Samaria. But Hezekiah was one of the kings in the south in Judah. Now, he, he was constantly aware of God's acts. He kept reading about them. He kept hearing about them. And so Hezekiah was one of the kings. And his writings span from Isaiah chapter 36 up to chapter 39. We read about him in that book, what he did, how he became king. But most of them also are written about in um, Second Kings chapter 16, verses 20 to chapter 20, verses 21. I mean, following, following up to verse 21. We also read about King Hezekiah in Second Chronicles, chapter 28 from verse 27 
to chapter 32 verse 33 and then i've already mentioned isaiah chapter 36 to chapter chapter 39 so friends king hezekiah he becomes one at a very tender age and he replaces his father you know it was hereditary and his father was called ahaz and after ahaz died his son hezekiah became king and this we read in second kings chapter 16 verse 20 he became king at a very tender age around about 20 there and so this man becomes a king and he does something that we want to pick from today hezekiah is described this king is described as one who had a very close relationship with god and you know a close relationship with god a, an intimate relationship with god means success means a lot that actually we pick from and just like we read about hezekiah the name meaning god strengthens and so he had a very keen interest in god's word he did what was right and the summary of his rule is in second chronicles chapter 31 verse 20 and this second chronicles chapter 31 verse 20 the Bible gives the summary statement about King Hezekiah that there thus King Hezekiah did throughout all Judah and he did what was good and right and faithful before the Lord is God. Remember, this is actually a summary statement which you may wish to pick yourself as a person, which you may wish to pick yourself as a leader possibly, and as a Christian who follows and serves God, that he did what was right, he was what was good, and he was faithful before the Lord his God. And in verse 21 it says that, and in every work that he undertook in the service of the house of God, and in accordance with the law and the commandments, seeking his God, he did with all his heart, and prospered praise the lord and so king hezekiah this is a summary statement about him even when we are going to talk a little bit more about him but the summary statement was he was he did what was good he was faithful before his god and in everything that he did like we have heard about other personalities like that it was it prospered and he's mentioned severally in the Bible. I've already given you the portions of scripture and very many others that I've not been able to mention. And so him replacing his father. Remember, I've told, I've shared with you that he, he replaced, just like you read also from the word of God, that he replaced his father, Ahaz. And Ahaz is known to have been a wicked person. He is widely known as ungodly and wicked. He did what was not right before God. And so his son coming into power, following his father. And of course, he had to do a little bit different. And so that actually he would win acceptability from the people. That he would win accept acceptability from God. And so this shows me something. That actually when you come into a place, when you come into a position, consider what is around you and do something that proves that God is with you. And so him replacing his father, he did what was right, and God was pleased with what he did. Remember, one of the things that he did, he cleansed the temple, he cleaned the temple by removing pagan altars that his father had erected in the house of, house of prayer. He removed the idols, and he removed all the pagan temples. He destroyed them. And that was commendable the reason why we have read from these second chronicles chapter 31 verse 20 that was he did what was good he was faithful to god meaning actually he did by removing these pagan altars by removing the idols which his father had instituted in jerusalem now one other important thing that actually king hezekiah did that we may wish to know is that actually in second chronicles chapter 20 29 second chronicles chapter 29 verse 5 we read about him again, that Levitical priesthood was restored. He reinstated the Levites. The Levites, remember, were the servants in the house of God. And so he dealt graciously 
by reinstating, by bringing them back into the house of prayer. And he told them, hear all Levites, hear me, consecrate yourselves and consecrate the house of the Lord. Now, leaders in the house of prayer are the ones, are part of the holiness, are part of the purity, because you're a leader in the church, you're a priest in the church, you're you a person who serves even a warden in the house of prayer. You are the one who cleans around. You are the one who sweeps around. Consecrate. And consecration is about making the pure, cleaning, and putting things in the way God wants them. And so here, he calls upon the priests. He calls, up, calls upon the Levites to consecrate the house of prayer. And first of all, to consecrate themselves. Can this be some lesson to us who serve in the house of the Lord? To consecrate ourselves and consecrating the house of prayer Every utensil that is, because we have tables, we have tablecloths, we have machines. Those who work on machines, you are, you play guitar, you play, I mean, those in instruments in the church, in the house of prayer, consecrate. So Hezekiah called upon the Levites to consecrate one, themselves, two, everything that is used in the house of prayer. Now, all of us that actually serve there, and I'm appealing to everyone, that actually this one was a message that was delivered to the Levites, but it can also be a message delivered to you. It's a message that has been delivered to me as a person, because I also, I'm also in the house of prayer. And all of you that actually serve in the house of prayer, consecrate yourselves, set yourselves apart, and consecrate the house of prayer, and everything that is in you there. Because that's, a, that's what God wants. Now, this very Hezekiah is also talked about that when he was faced with threats, he sent a word to the man of God. Leave alone what you hear about the man of God in these days. But this was the man of God, Isaiah. And he sent, he sent a word to prophet Isaiah. And in 2 Kings, so let us read it there. 2 Kings chapter 19, that he never faced anywhere else, but he faced God word. And this challenges me, that when challenges come, when problems come, when you're faced with, where do you face first of all, before we dive into maybe consulting with other people? Prophet, I mean, King Hezekiah did something here that we are going to read from Second Kings chapter 19, verses 1 to 7. And this is what, Hezekiah is talked about that as soon as King Hezekiah had it, you know, there was a king that had spread threats, challenging King Hezekiah, challenging God. And so when Hezekiah had it, he tore his clothes and covered himself with sackcloth and went into the house of prayer. This is the point I'm saying, making here. And he went into the house of prayer. He went to the house of the Lord and he sent Eliakim who was one over the household and Shebna, the secretary and the senior priests covered with sackcloth also to the priest, to the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos. They said to him, that says Hezekiah, this day is a day of distress, of rebuke and of disgrace. Children have come to the point of birth, and there is no strength to bring them forth. It may be that the Lord, your God, had all the words of Rabushakeh, whom his father, the king of Assyria, has sent to mock the living God, mocking the living God. And he will rebuke, and will rebuke the words the, that the Lord, your God, has heard. Therefore, lift up your prayer for the remnant that is left. Lift up your prayer for the remnant that is left. When the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah, Isaiah said to them, Say to your master, Thus says the Lord, Do not be afraid because of the words that you have heard, with which the servants of the king of Assyria have reviled me. Behold, I will put a spirit in him so that he shall hear a rumor and return to his own land and I will make him fall by the sword in his own hand. 
Praise the Lord. Now, I've just been taking a lot of time reading this, but it is actually gives us one of the, the, the key things that King Hezekiah did. Whenever he was first, he was a challenge. He turned to the prophet and prophet Isaiah reassured Hezekiah that king of Assyria, known as Sennacherib, never entered Jerusalem at all. And the city was spared. You read on in this second Kings chapter 19, read on and you discover that actually the assurances came and King Hezekiah was spared. Jerusalem was spared. The nation was spared. Now this goes to all the leaders that on our account, God can save a nation. Church leaders, on our account, God can heal the land. And so we pick a lesson, friends, that in our positions of leadership, Hezekiah gives us a point that actually he runs into the house of prayer and he consults with the people that have been appointed to reveal God's truths. So him entering the house of prayer, he prayed a very powerful prayer. And that is in Second Kings, the same chapter 19, verse 19. And he mentioned something that, O oh Lord, hear this. Incline your ear. O oh Lord, save us. Please, from his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you, O oh Lord, are God alone. Now, may you make the same prayer, friend, that whenever challenges come your way, where do you run? Now, so King Hezekiah makes a prayer. Lord, save us. I say it in the morning. I say it in the afternoon. I say it in the evening. I say it all the time. Lord, save us. Even on the road, when you're moving, Lord, save us. It makes, it becomes your slogan. And I, it is just something that I wanted to put to you. So King Hezekiah said that. So God kept Jerusalem safe. In the night, the Lord God's angel killed many people there. Hundreds of the armies of the enemy. Read on Second Kings chapter 19. You discover that this Hezekiah's prayer worked for him. So, I pick a lesson that actually Hezekiah leaves for me to keep trusting and not to backtrack ourselves, to keep believing that God will do something for you. Now, this same Hezekiah, remember that I will not leave this stage without mentioning him falling sick, that he fell sick in 2 Kings chapter 20. And when he fell sick, the Bible says that Hezekiah did not actually, he almost also, but in, the day, in those days, Hezekiah became sick and was at the point of death. And Isaiah, the prophet, the son of Amos, had said that you set your house in order. Set your house in order. In chapter 20, 2 Kings. Set your house in order, you, for you shall surely die. And Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord, pray the Lord. He prayed to the Lord. And the Lord God, the Bible says, that added him time, 15 years down the road. Now read 2 Kings chapter 20. You discover that actually this, this man, when he fell sick, he prayed. He prayed a recovery prayer. I want to mention to you, he prayed a recovery prayer. Will you also make a recovery prayer for your health? A recovery prayer for your business? Is it dwindling? Is it slowing down? A recovery prayer like King Hezekiah did. Something that may not be doing well, pray a recovery prayer. So Hezekiah leaves us a lesson to pray a recovery prayer, beseeching God to be merciful and remember the good that he had done. Now, meaning, friends, that Hezekiah, when he was praying in this chapter 20, he says, remember the good that I've done. And before, so he prayed, you no, know, he prayed to God, referring to what he had done already. Now, when you are able to do good, do good. Because that good that you are doing will become your reference point, pray the Lord. That you say, God, look, this is, this, this, and you refer to it. As long as you are able, beseech God to remember mercy. Remembering mercy upon what you have done. And so, friends, his prayer was hard, and more time was added for him in verses 5 to 7, and you see that, that actually his time, God had his prayer. Now, here we remember, one, God hears prayer. Two, God forgives and 
when he ans when he hears, he answers. That's point number two that I wanted to mention. That God answers prayer. So this is a kaya. Leave it as a lesson. And will you please read Second Kings chapter twenty and discover that actually God answered his recovery prayer, and that was it. Now, like others, eventually, as King Hezekiah went on doing his work, went on, went on, went on, he eventually messed up himself, and um, he also struggled a little bit, and Prophet Isaiah rebuked his foolishness. Now, the bigger lesson, friends, from King Hezekiah, King Hezekiah leaves us a model of faithfulness and trust in the Lord. Now, I appeal to you, as I appeal to myself, Hezekiah leaves us a model of faithfulness and trust in the Lord. In our generation, we need the leaders who will give us a model of faithfulness and trust in the Lord. Be it political leaders, be it religious leaders, we need the models to model God before the younger generation, to model God before others. And remember that if God is for us, who can be against us? As we read in Romans chapter 8, verse 31, Paul puts it, and just like God was on the side of Hezekiah when King Sennacherib of Assyria came and he, he retreated, many people dying there, his enemies retrieving, I mean retreating, God can also be on our side. And I pray that God will be on your side. Amen. That God will be on our side. Now, one other thing that I actually remember is that actually Hezekiah's trust was rewarded with the answer to prayer. And during our generation, we also pray that our trust, our faithfulness, our love for God be rewarded. And God is a rewarder. That may God reward your Work. May God reward your trust. May God reward your love for him. And because Hezekiah's trust was rewarded with answered prayer, successful endeavors came his way. And so there were miraculous victories over his enemies because he had done what God required him to do. From King Hezekiah, we discover his trust being rewarded with an answer to prayer. And so one other thing that actually we find in Hezekiah is that he prayed. Prayer is needed. He prayed indeed. Remember how he faced the wall? Now may God help you and may God bless you as you also face the wall. In a crisis, runs to the house of the Lord. Now I ask you the question, where do you run? When during the time of crisis, where do you go? Of course, again, this is the time when people run to the witch doctors. People run to, you know, people want, run to many, many things there. Now, remember, Hezekiah gives us a lesson. Now, he only needed a reminder not to be afraid. Now, we need people in our society who will speak tenderly also to our leaders to be reminded that they need not to be afraid. Tell your people in the house not need not to be afraid. We need encouragers, Isaiah was. We need encouragers in our midst. Now, I told you to read about this in 2 Kings chapter 19. You see Isaiah and the prophet, I, I mean, prophet Isaiah and King Hezekiah interacting over several things and King Hezekiah was heeding to what Isaiah was saying. So friends, as we come to the conclusion, to the end of this message here, Hezekiah told God who the enemy was. Praise the Lord. And there are many times when we pray, we begin mingling words. But Hezekiah was straight. In 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 6, he told God, hear, O oh God, what the enemy is saying. Hear the words of King Sennacherib. Now, when you go to the presence of the Lord, tell oh God who the enemy is. Tell oh God what the trouble is. Tell oh God exactly what you need from him. And the Lord offered King Hezekiah an answer the prayer.
So when you pray, tell God the entire story. Tell God what you need. Tell God, save us, O oh God. Tell God, I need peace, O oh God. Tell God. And God took away the enemies, took away the, the, I mean, Hezekiah's fears. The Lord took away his enemies. Now, friends, we may be speaking these things, but it takes faith. It takes trust. It takes one's belief within him. And so King Hezekiah leaves me a great lesson that I learn that actually for him, he presented everything before God. And I pray that, oh God, help me that as I talk about these personalities and each, as each one hears about these personalities, little things that I have spoken, I have not spoken everything about Hezekiah, like for instance today, I pray that God, you answer this prayer, that actually we pick something that will enable us to walk in the footsteps, that will enable us to have an answer the prayer that comes from you. That when we come before you, we tell you exactly what we need, but you already know, but give us the heart that is God word. Father God, we thank you that you bless each one of us in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen.